I'm going to take a crack at my origin story. I want to share with you some of the reasons why I do what I do. When I was uh, young, I was a small guy. In fact, I was the third shortest kid in school. The first shortest was a midget. The next shortest was a dwarf. And then there was me. Now, I'm, I, I might be older than you, I don't know. But back then we called midgets and dwarves, now they call them little people, which is fine with me, but this is just back then, okay? Every self-respecting bully would not pick on a midget or a dwarf because even the bullies knew that no one would like them or support their decision to be a bully against somebody who, you know, you don't pick on the handicapped people, you don't pick on the people who... Right, so it left it to me, Pauly, little Paul, the smallest regular proportioned person. And I was picked on. And in order to protect myself, my older brothers suggested um, that I try karate. And I went to a dojo in town. There was a karate dojo right next to a judo dojo. They were in the basement of a building. And you could walk inside through the karate dojo into the judo dojo. And I went on one weekend. My, pa my parents drove me over. My mom drove me over, I guess. And I took a class in karate. And then I walked over and I took a class in judo. And I did not like the karate. And I did like the judo. Maybe it had something to do with the judo teacher or the karate teacher. I don't know. My judo teacher, I ended up doing that for seven or eight years when I was little. I didn't know, but in my little town outside of New York City, my judo teacher was the head of a small school that was one of the finest in the country. He developed national champions, and in fact, I became a national champion. So, he suggested that we all take dance if we want to improve our judo fluidity on the mat, right? And I did that. And I was very, very shy because I was picked on. And when I took dance, I ended up learning that I was a very quick physical study. I could imitate movement. In fact, I can imitate lots of things. I don't know why. I can just imitate. I have learned lots of expressions in different languages from having traveled around the world with my own performance groups. I have um, been taught lots of expressions in other languages because people like to teach uh, and then hear it parroted back. And I then end up learning little bits of different languages. So I can speak baby German, I can speak baby Korean, I can speak baby Russian, I can, you know, all these different languages. But back then, I became a national judo champion who ended up liking the dance and in being able to imitate the dance, I was, um, uh, I became popular with uh, some of the girls. And I was a little shy guy, so it was a value-added bonus that I could meet some girls. The dance from the judo with this performing stuff, I ended up getting involved in some summer camp things where I performed. And I broke out of my shell. You see, I was very introverted and shy, but something inside of me told me that I had I had to make a choice. I could either go into my cave and be a shy, introverted person and not talk to anybody, 
or I could completely circumvent that and learn how to be big and I could always abandon that and be shy and I'm still very shy. I know how to communicate, I know how to perform and present stuff, but inside I'm a shy person. And something about learning the power of communicating on stage enabled me always to walk out on stage and just be the bigger person, be the larger than life version of me. And it works. It enables me to express myself in a very healthy fashion. It's a good outlet. And over the years, I became adept at understanding how to relate to large amounts of people and how to create work that engages people. And that's where I codified this system that I teach. I teach to actors, I teach to business people, I teach to young kids who want to be public speakers. I teach stutterers how to not get over their stutter, but how to embrace the difficulty and go through the stuff. And it has everything to do with my being this shy little guy who was picked on, who needed to stand up for the people who are the freaks, the people who I identify with, the weirdos, the misfits, the folks that didn't always get such an easy hand dealt to them. That was me. And I still feel that. And I still have more empathy for everyone who is struggling than for everyone who has been gifted with a silver spoon. I want to help the downtrodden, the difficult ones who don't know how to get out of their own way. I have a method. I also have a lot of patience to a point, after which I have zero patience. But my sense is that I can push people, I can follow people up the high diving board and I can walk with them to the edge and I can tell them, you're not going down the way you came up. I'm not pushing you, but you're gonna have to jump yourself. Because you can't, people won't learn the lesson if you hold their hand and do it for them. They will only learn the lesson when they learn that they are empowered, just like in The Wizard of Oz. You've had the ability to find your way home this entire time. You didn't learn that you had it inside you until you went through the big journey. So, my journey continues. I have done an enormous amount of different types of jobs. I've worked for other people, but mostly I like to work for myself. It took a long time to learn that the audition is a two-way street and you have to choose wisely. You don't just take a client because they want to pay you. You have to make sure that they're the right type of client. You have to make sure that they're a person who is going to make themselves proud, not give you a headache, allow you to nurture them, all that kind of stuff. The people who need my help are the people who my instincts scream out I can help them get out of their own way. My judo teacher was an incredible man. And I went looking for him numerous times. And when I finally went back to my hometown and located his house, I knocked on the door and his wife answered the door and I said who I was and she said, oh wow, I remember you. Um, he had died of cancer about three months before I found him.
I had hedged finding him for years. I just wanted to thank him. He was the original badass. He was great. Mm. Walter Shumway. I have other people I can share with you too. People who inspire me. I don't get inspired by money. I like the idea that lots of money can buy things, but people with money don't, don't impress me. It's what they came from and what messages they're delivering. That's the guts. That's the stuff that I care about. You don't have to make a lot of money in order to be impressive. Your vision, what you want to do, the value is so much greater than the monetization of. Well, <laughs> there you have it. That's some of what makes me tick. <laughs>